Hi, folks. I'm Steve Adubato, and it is my honor to introduce Mr. Stu Wexler, AP government and politics teacher at Heightstown High School. This is, in fact, part of our uh, series we're doing that really recognizes great teachers uh, in this state and in this region. Um, Classroom Close-Up is a series that uh, the NJEA does and airs on NJTV, and you're featured in that clip we're about to see, but, but I want to set it up here. Your class is in its third year of lobbying for a federal law called the Civil Rights Cold Case Act, which means what? So the Civil Rights Cold Case Records Act is modeled on the JFK Records Act, and the goal is to get the mostly the Department of Justice, to release the files on civil rights cold cases from 50, 60 years ago. What kind of cases are we talking about? Um, you'd be talking about cases that would be similar to, like, the Mississippi burning killings, but including cases like um, the Willie Edwards killing. You're Mississippi burning, like church? Uh, Mississippi burning was the, the three civil rights workers who were killed in Freedom Sharner, Summer. You're talking about Scherner? Uh, Scherner, 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 Scherner Yeah, Cheney. And then, but it would also include the Birmingham bombing. Right. But even, but those cases actually were largely solved. These are cases like the murder of Willie Edwards in 1957, um, other cases that are similar, where the cases actually were reopened, closed, and this is in the last 10 years, with no resolution. So how are they closed if they're open? Well, they were reopened in, um, under the Emmett Till Act in 2007. By the way, people, do you think most people know who Emmett Till was? Uh, I don't think the mass majority of people know, even though What Emmett was his Till, crime? His crime was whistling or in the, wrong, in the direction a of a white woman. And for that? He was lynched and beaten and killed. What year? 1955, it would have been. Unbelievable. Yeah. And so... They, in his name, they reopened a bunch of civil rights cases yeah. that followed, and they closed them. Uh, the Department of Justice opened up 113, closed 113 without any resolution. And so the hope is, is if they can release the files, mm. that everyday citizens, investigative journalists, historians, and maybe just as importantly, the family members, sure. can at least get some answers, maybe not justice. That might be too, too late in some cases. But at least they get to know something about what happened to their loved ones. Let's check out this video. It's some classroom close up. It's a powerful story. We're still talking about issues of racial violence in our classrooms today. Maybe if we start talking about the stuff that still wasn't resolved from 50 years ago, we could start understanding why there's issues to this day. We never healed the original wounds in many cases. Partner up with somebody and update that person about where you are presently at trying to get representatives and lawmakers to meet with. Stuart Wexler and his AP government and politics class are three years into the process of getting a bill called the Civil Rights Cold Case Act made into law. We're the first high school class to ever write a law that I know of to actually get a bill introduced into the House of Representatives. Stewart's previous classes drafted the bill, and if it becomes law, will facilitate the release of documents in unsolved civil rights cases, like the Warless Jackson and Emmett Till murders. Warless Jackson is one of many cases. You have a person in Mississippi, activist in civil rights, He's killed. There's very strong suspicion if the Silver Dollar Group had something to do with it. They were a, sort of a violent offshoot of the Klan there. Warless Jackson was killed by a car bomb, and 14-year-old Emmett Till was lynched for allegedly catcalling a white female store owner. Later, it was found out that it had actually not happened at all. She had not been catcalled, and this poor man was lynched for no reason. We feel like as if we provide context to our bill through use of Emmett Till, it would help us uh, push forward. This is Jenna, how can I help you? The students contacted many representatives with the hopes of actually meeting with some of them during a class trip to Washington, D.C. in December of 2017. The goal was to gain as much support as possible for their bill. How many appointments do you have? The act basically aims to give closure to the families and victims of civil rights cold cases, and it will establish a review board to oversee these files and hopefully get them released to the public eye. It's clear that 
racism is still prevalent in society today and we're still fighting for justice of these victims. And it's a question of humanity as a whole, that these people were humans, their own family members went through this, this deserves some sort of justice. It's a sense of security and relief to see that something's being done. If a high school class can do that, what could everyday Americans do? What can I do later on in my life if I really feel that there's something that can be done to make something happen in the country? Extraordinary. What's this been like for you? It's been eye-opening. Um, first off, to see the students really dig into it and see something actually materialize. I didn't know if anything would materialize from something like this. I actually probably would have put my odds at pretty low when I started, and now I'm fairly optimistic that maybe we can actually get this through. Um, but I've also, you know, I've taught politics for a long time and followed it for even longer, and you learn things about the political process you never thought you'd learn. Like? Um, well, uh, in some ways, By having way, a lot- so Sorry for interrupting. As a former member of the state legislature in a different life, I used to be struck by how things got stuck, mm -hmm. important things. This is in committee, right? Yes. Why is it stuck? I would argue a couple of things. One, the committee's in flux, so they're already on their second chairman going out the door by November with Trey Gowdy. Uh, Chaffetz went out earlier in so the midterm. So Jason Chaffetz leaves. Yeah. Trey Gowdy on his way out. Mm -hmm. So therefore, there's instability in the committee and, and therefore, what does that have to do with the agenda of what's Well, considered? part of it is, is that the committee is also going to, is one that's very heavily involved in some of the Trump yeah, investigation okay. type of so stuff So what happens is well. something like this, which is so long overdue? It's a no-brainer, but in many ways, I think sometimes that works against you. So in, in a controversial bill, it might motivate somebody who doesn't have a political cost to pay to take the side of a controversial bill that will never pass. Okay, so what do they say about this? They say stuff to us like it's a no-brainer. Well, why uh, is it no-brainer not moving? I think why it's it no-brainer. Floor of the house. I think it's because that it's not something that r rates on their agenda the same way that tax reform rates on their agenda. You mean they don't get points for this? They don't get points for well, it. Well, think it's about what. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what's it do for the students? I think a lot of them realize, I mean, I've been going to D.C. for years, but not necessarily with, with the students, not necessarily for lobbying trips. And oddly, I think the lobbying trip invigorates them more than just going to D.C. regularly, doing a regular tour. I think once they get their feet wet in the political process and see they can make a difference, a lot of them say to me that that's what inspired them maybe to pursue political science and mm. public service after high school and in college. So... I think they get quite a bit out of it, or at least I hope they do. Before I let you out here, what do you love about teaching? You know, I lo love interacting with the students and the light going on, and then maybe you get your fangs into a few of them, and you changed our lives. So that's, that's always my hope. You frustrated, for lay out here, you frustrated that we haven't made the progress we obviously should be making in terms of racial justice and issues of racial violence? It's fascinating to me that the same issues keep on reoccurring. And again, I mean, I, I, I go back to what I said in, in, in that clip. In, in a way, if you haven't bothered to confront your own demons about it from 50, 60 years ago, why don't people understand the black experience with, with law enforcement or with violence? They, they haven't resolved yeah. that experience. They haven't resolved those issues for them from 50, 60 years ago. Keep doing important work. Thank you. Stuart, uh, Stu Wexler. AP, government and politics teacher at Heightstown High School. Thank you so much. Thank you. Stay right there. We'll be right back right after this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, Seton Hall University, the law firm of Gibbons PC, Hackensack Meridian Health, Wells Fargo, MD Advantage, and by Choose New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.